Hi everybody and welcome to my brand new YouTube channel, Delta 4 Productions, where I'll be displaying and discussing shoulder sleeve insignia and pocket patches from mostly U.S. Army or World War II airborne units and from Army Special Forces units of the Vietnam War. So what I hope to do is to show some of my patches and mostly just give a brief history of the units who wore these patches uh, and also talk a little bit about where the patches came from, where they were made, how you can avoid being burned if you want to get into patch collecting, buying some patches. I'll mention some reputable dealers throughout this series, places to go to, shows to attend, and kind of share some of my experiences as a fairly new collector. Generally, what I'd like to do is upload one video a week, but in the first few weeks of my channel, I'll probably upload more than one a week just to get the channel rolling and to give viewers an idea of where I'm going with this. So keep an eye on the channel, and I'll talk about all the things that uh, I've learned about collecting these patches. And the very first installment of my series, vlog number one, is going to be on the Office of Strategic Services Jedberg Wings, which were worn by Jedberg teams and operational groups and a couple of others from the OSS's Special Operations Branch. So stay tuned for that history. The OSS was formed in the summer of 1942 from a number of different agencies that coalesced to become the OSS. And their mission was to conduct intelligence uh, operations, psychological warfare operations, guerrilla warfare operations behind enemy lines. There were a lot of sections in the OSS, a lot of branches, and those branches were even further subdivided sometimes. One of these branches was the Special Operations Branch, which included the OGs, the operational groups, and the Jedbergs, among others. The Jedberg teams were three-man teams composed of U.S., British, and French or Dutch soldiers. In France, at least one of the team members was always a Frenchman. One of the three members of the team was a highly trained, highly skilled radio man. What the Jedbergs did was jump into occupied France, not just in Normandy. They met Maquis leaders, they organized them, trained them, acquired supplies, gathered intelligence, and went into combat with them. This didn't happen until D-Day because General Eisenhower was concerned that if a Jedberg member was captured, then the plans for D-Day might be revealed to the Germans. The OSS began recruiting soldiers for the various branches of the OSS in the summer and fall of 1943. Among other traits, they were looking for language-qualified individuals uh, who spoke either French or German. A lot of paratroopers who were stationed uh, at Fort Benning and Fort Bragg were selected uh, for this special unit. Their initial training took them to the Washington, D.C. area and into Virginia. They were then uh, taken to Scotland and a few other areas in the U.K. where they were trained by SOE, the Special Operations Executive, and other members of the British military. One interesting side note about jump training uh, in the OSS is that even qualified parachutists who'd been through the parachute school at Fort Benning had to take the British parachute course. I believe there was uh, one in Ringway and one in North Africa. So even if they were jump qualified, had to go do it. The Brits jumped very differently, uh, especially in the OSS. Much of the Jedberg and OG training was based on the training given to British commandos. This included small unit tactics, land navigation, weapons familiarization, demolitions, and other skills more akin to spies than soldiers. I think one of the really important aspects of collecting any kind of military, including shoulder patches, is uh, that you need to remember who wore them, why they wore them. And so there are tons of books on the OSS, uh, but I'm going to show you just a couple here 
to give you an idea of what's out there. And uh, the first one here is an Osprey book. And I know a lot of you guys and girls are familiar with Osprey. The great thing about the Osprey books, if it's written by the right author, is that they basically summarize some pretty big units and campaigns and just give you the meat of what you need to know. So if you don't know anything about the OSS, this Osprey book is a good overview, and I recommend it. Uh, you can see, uh, as a matter of fact, on the cover of this, that the jet on the left, the American on the left, is wearing a Jetberg wing, which is pretty cool. The second book I'd like to mention is called No Bridges Blown by William Drew. He was a Jedburgh team member who uh, jumped into France in July of 1944. And the great thing about this book is that it's a first-person account, and he talks about his recruitment, his training, and then, of course, his missions. And this book was written in, I believe, 1971, published originally in 1971. So uh, I'd imagine that his, his memory was fairly fresh. Uh, at that time. So a very good book if you're interested in what the Jedbergs did in France. The last book I'd like to share with you is called The Jedbergs by Will Irwin. This is a pretty straight up historical narrative of the Jedbergs. So it's a great read and goes in depth about the training and recruitment of the Jedberg teams. And I believe this book if I recall correctly, follows six or eight specific teams that jumped into occupied France after D-Day. But a very good read. Again, there are lots of books out there on the OSS and a couple of good ones on the Deadbergs. And I encourage anybody interested to grab some of these and read them. So who wore these Jedberg wings? Well, just prior to D-Day, it was decided that all special operations were going to take part in the invasion of France should be under a single command. And as a result of that, SFHQ was born, Special Force Headquarters. And personnel assigned to SFHQ wore this Jedberg wing. That didn't mean they were necessarily Jedbergs. They were also worn by the operational groups, which were larger groups of Americans uh, in uniform who operated with the Maquis and conducted larger military action against the Germans. And it also included liaison personnel to higher headquarters. So any of those people could have worn this. So it's much more of a shoulder patch, a shoulder sleeve insignia than jump wings, even though that's what they kind of look like. But this was not a jump qualification badge. Uh, this is an insignia um, that was worn on the right sleeve and you can do some searches and in some of the books that I showed you earlier you'll also see uh, how these wings were worn. The Jedbergs operated all over France until uh, the fall of 1944 and although some teams did jump into Holland for Market Garden the Jedbergs were shut down in early 1945. And as many of you probably know, modern day Army Special Forces uh, traces its lineage back to the OSS and the Jedbergs. And of course, uh, what became the CIA uh, was born out of the OSS in 1947. These particular wings here are authentic and they are tough to find. They're pretty rare. Every now and then you'll see them come up on eBay, a real one, but it's not uh, not all that often. Uh, more often you will see uh, fakes, and a lot of people get burned with fakes. And in just a second, I'm going to tell you how you can avoid being burned uh, by fakes. On my two wings, um, I've not had them that long. I've wanted them for a long time. I kind of lucked into them uh, through some networking with a fellow collector who knew somebody who was selling them. Um, and a lot of people don't sell on eBay. Uh, a lot of people are not active on the forums and the boards. And that's why you need to build up a little network of dealers and collectors and like-minded people uh, to find uh 
wings like these. So where do you find these wings and other insignia and avoid getting burned? One, you join the American Society of Military Insignia Collectors. Two, you register for and visit the U.S. Military Forum. And three, you get to know dealers it shows. You can build up a network of fellow collectors and contacts doing those three things. That's what I've done over the years. Don't just rely on eBay. Uh, a lot of fakes sold on eBay. If you want to know whether or not something is authentic, go to the U.S. Military Forum, ask, and people will tell you yes, no. When you go to shows, you get to handle things. You get to see what, how they're made, when they were made. So go to the shows, go to the military forum, become a member of ASMIC, ask questions, don't get burned. So I hope to see you guys soon. My next planned video will be on the Special Allied Airborne Reconnaissance Force, and I'll show you insignia and talk a little bit about the history of that unit if you like my video. Please share it, like it, leave me some comments. Till next time, you guys take care.